all right all right guys welcome back welcome back we have enough and enough and plenty gs for you guys you know uh p2b's arrest has been trending all over the social media platform and Tinubu government as a matter of fact today came and confessed how and um, what they are doing in, in, in that so-called asorak and everything you know i'm going to you know dissect this important information and details for you guys you know because a lot of things is actually happening well let's start with p2b's arrest you know the, the first person that blew this uh, uh trumpet or that blew the whistle about uh Tinubu's government attempt to arrest mr p2b's area father charlie boy you know look at the post he made which you know generated a, a, a lot of controversy you know there is no smoke without fire there is no smoke without fire these plans has been ongoing it has been ongoing you know they're trying to set up mr p2b and trying to do a lot of things uh, uh, against mr p2b let me show you uh the uh post that uh, this charlie boy made that actually you know uh reviewed the plans of this particular government being bola maintainable government this is a, a post that charlie boy made you know he said there is a report of an attempt of arrest on P2B by Tinibu's government over P2B's consistent refusal to back down on calling Tinibu out towards good governance and accountability. He said, any arrest or charges against Obi must be met with a resistance as never seen in the history of Nigeria before, and obedience are ready for it. Tinibu's government must stand with caution not to set this nation on fire with an illegal arrest of His Excellency P2B. We call on Tinibu's government to desist from her evil plans against P2B because Nigeria will not remain the same. This is what Charlie Boy said, that the that Tinibu government is not happy that they are planning to set P2B up and you know, arrest him because of the way P2B has been calling them out and exposing their evil and their bad uh, policies and their bad government, you know. And like I've said before, there's no smoke with that fight. This is not the first time that the Nibu's government has been doing a lot of evil things against Mr. P2B. Remember, you we are the first people that went and leaked P2B's uh, 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 and formed and framed uh, 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 P2B's innocent conversation with uh, Bishop Oyedepo. The old doctor did and altered whatever P2B said, you know, and, you know, tried to Paint people to be as if he's a tribal or religious bigot and all that. This is what uh, the Tinubu's government and APC have been planning to do, but it is not working for them because Mr. P2B be has a lot of supporters that they will not even there. I'm going to show you what obedience said, you know, when they heard uh, uh, the news about uh, P2B's uh, arrest and everything, you know, P P you know, uh, trust obedience. P2B, uh, APC, and Balame Tinubu, they are so, so scared of the obedience. They are so, so scared of the obedience. That is why PDP, you can never see APC talking about uh, or Balame Tinibu supporter, talking about PDP and Article Black. No, th those ones, they know that those ones, they can, be set, they can settle them with money and in induce them with money and everything. But they know that obedience are people built on principle. These are people These are people that brought out their resources to support Mr. P2B. They are not asking you for anything. They are not hungry. Most of them are wealthy and rich. They are not hungry and they are not even asking for any favor. So it, APC is finding it difficult to destroy the obedient movement and Mr. P2B. They've, they've destroyed the Labour Party by trying to, you know, use the Julius Abre. They saw that that one did not even destroy P2B and the obedient movement. Now they are finding a way to destroy the obedient movement and P2B. It's not working. And they're trying to arrest P2B. Look at what uh, obedient said. This person said, they should hurry up and uh, uh, they should hurry, please. They are wasting time. Let them do it and let's see. This guy is a strong supporter of Mr. P2B. They should hurry up and, uh, and arrest P2B so they will see what will happen in this particular country. You know, they don't know that if not for Mr. P2B, that after that 2023 presidential election that I did a lot of rascalities and rigging, that, P2, that obedient could have actually shut down this country and, you know, probably, you know, uh, gone on a protest and anything. But, because of the way P2B addressed the obedience and because of the way P2B, you know, called for peace and everything, that, that was why everybody backed down. A lot of obedience were ready to hit the streets and protest against that sham of election that was actually conducted last year. This other person said, goosebumps day my body as I see this information like this. He said, on a thief, our mandate, and then the only human being that's giving us joy and hope on our one go arrest them, please make it fast, I beg. You know, people are, are, are daring the federal government led by Parliament in that if they bond them well, if they really know that they have the power, let them go and even make the slightest attempt to arrest Mr. Peter or even detain him for one minute, that they will seal or uh, they will see the real face and the reaction of the obedient movement. You know, they don't understand how the obedient movement moves. A movement that cut across all ethnic divides, both in the north, central, north, south, west, south, south, east, south, east, and everywhere. They will see what revolution is all about. If, as a matter of fact, they attempt or uh, dare to, you know, uh, put it to be in for, uh, behind the bar for any reason or for any purpose, I can boldly tell you for free. So, well, on another developing story, I told you guys that there are en enough gist and en enough uh, stories for you guys today. You know, Tinibu's government came out and said that, oh, that that what is actually happening now is uh, that the problem that Nigeria is facing now is because Tinibu went and adopted uh, P2B's policies. You could imagine that a sitting government is coming to tell Nigerians that that the problems and some other things that is happening now is because they adopted some of the policies that P2B and uh, uh, Tukabu Baka said in their manifesto during the, uh, during the 2023 presidential election. You know, it is it is not just funny and pathetic, it is very, very sad that this government, you know, 
can never take responsibility of their failures. What they want to do is to always shift responsibility. They always want to blame somebody else or someone else for their failures and all that. You know, they said, look at as you they say they said that subsidy and forest crisis because you know dollar is almost one five today. Subsidy, they say subsidy is gone. People are buying for at the rate of one five or one thousand. You know, and now they've seen that Nigerians are angry, angry at them instead of them to take. The, 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 uh, and bear the responsibility of their poor policies and poor implement, implementation. They are trying to shift the blame. So people will start blaming P2B as if P2B was or is the person in charge. You know, they said execution, they said that Tinibu adopted solutions promised by Obi Atiku uh, uh, during campaign. This is what Shetima, the vice president, said. You know, this Shetima, I don't know where Tinibu got him from, but you know, he, he, he's not even worth being a, the vice president of a nation. Look at what a vice president is uttering from his mouth. You know, when Obi then saw how. Uh, when Obina saw how this Tinubu government wants to shift blames and responsibility, you know, this is what Tinubu government loves doing. They always, at each point in time, want to shift the blame. Obina said something. This is this, what this he said. The reason he avoided media chat and presidential debate was to copy and was to copy what other candidates will, will, will do because he lacks his own idea. Nigeria really entered one chance. This person is saying, remember during the 2023 presidential election, there was no invitation that was not given to Balame and Tinubu. They called him for a, a presidential debate or a national debate. Tinibu, for one day, for one single day, did not attend any of the debates. A man that is looking for a job, because if you are seeking for the seat of the presidency, you are looking for a job from Nigerians, and you, you must come and tell us what you have for us. They, he did not come, and people allowed him to sit there as the president. That he went and copied everything. Uh, did copy and paste. You know, sometimes if you copy and paste something, it does not mean that you have the proper way to implement it. The implementation is a problem. Of course, everybody can have a proper idea of what to do. I go and implement it. He didn't even know what it to be and how it to be was planning to implement all the uh, policies and the uh, uh, reforms that he wanted to do. He went and copied it to be verbatim, you know, thinking that everything will go according to the way he planned it. This person said, these guys have lost it. I can't believe they only know how to rig election without any idea how to govern. It shows they actually stole both P2B and Atuka Abubakar's manifestos without any idea how to implement it. Like I just said, that is not all about selling, stealing people's manifesto. Do you know how to implement I told you that, that Nibu lacks knowledge. He does not even know his left from his right. He does not even know politically and how to lead this country. He came out, I don't blame him. He just came and, and told you guys, Emilokon, it is my thorn. It is literally my thorn. That is what he told Nigerians. Emilokon, it is my thorn. He, he did not tell you, I'm, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. He did not tell you anything. He just simply told you, Emilokon, my thorn. And some godly people went and voted for him and allowed INEC to assist him and rig the election. Now, to, to rid the country and to make important policies that is, that is going to better the lives of Nigerians is a very big uh, 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 a problem for him. This other person said, thank God, say, I don't promise my followers anything during campaign. And them just believe in me. You know, he posted a picture of Balame and Tinibu laughing and quoted this. And this is the truth. He never promised even his so-called followers anything. You know, they just blandly uh, went and voted for a man that, you know, that, that does not even have any iota of probably what is happening and what is not happening within the country. I can boldly tell you this for free. And they're expecting him to come and do magic when he did not literally offer or probably offer anything anybody to anybody. This person said, you copied answers in an exam examination but ended up copying incorrectly. And this is exactly the same thing that uh, Bala Metinibu's government said. This other person said, these guys are obviously confused. With the way they are moving, one can easily see that they don't have any blueprint. And it's the truth. Bala Metinibu's government does not have any blueprint. A man that came and told you that I'm going to continue from where Bari stopped. Because a lot of people were asking, where did Bari stop? Bari stopped at a, 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 a level that is low, a level that destroyed the nation, a level that caused a lot of insecurities. And, and Tinibu said he's going to start from that level. And of course, he started not even at that level. He went even below, 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 below. Because the economic hardship we experience and the suffering that Nigerians are passing through, even during Buhari's time, we've not even experienced it. Some people are even saying that Buhari is way better than this so-called government. A year, this is one, one year plus Tinibu you know, became the so-called president of this country. There is no single thing there's no single achievement that you can say, look at what this APC government have achieved within this uh, specified number of months. One good year, and there's no achievement. Everything that they've been telling Nigerians are all lies. They will come out and tell you that a uh, Port Harcourt refinery uh, will come out, uh, will start working uh, by December last year. It did not work. They will come out and tell you that a fresh subsidy is gone. It, it, it did not work. They will come out, they will come out all, all sorts of lies. They will come and tell you that investors are coming. You are investors are releasing statements. Telling Nigeria that they are not coming anything, that we should not even listen to what all the lies and all the propaganda that our government is doing, that they are not coming. Because Nigeria is not even a suitable environment for them to do business. Tindibu cannot attract any foreign direct investors within the country because of what his lies. Because of what his lies and he's incapable of, you know, attracting any foreign direct uh, uh, investors within the country, which is basically the truth. 
and they want to come and arrest people. Well, I would like you guys, you guys to drop your comments and tell me exactly what you think about this, their so-called plan to arrest Mr. Peter because it will, this country will actually be hot. If they there in as a matter of fact, to even arrest Peter and put him anywhere for one minute, you will see they will see the potential powers of the obedient movement, the, the potential political power of the obedient movement. Where the Tinubu government cannot even dare try because fear of whatever thing that will happen will not even allow them to permit them. I would like you guys to share this video.